Hello there. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Knox to Nuggets. My name is Oluwa Yomi Ute, and it's such a joy to come here with this very beautiful morning. I'm sure you've had a, a fantastic weekend, and the holidays are on. Thank God for the gift of life. Thank God for preserving us to see this day. And I say a big thank you to every single person that is joining me live on this program. Thank you so much for your, the share of your time. I do not take it for granted. And like I always say, like the video, share it. Let somebody out there know that there is something called Knox to Nuggets. And if you're going to watch thereafter, you're going to be watching the replay. Thank you so much. Again, you also have the option of liking the video, of sharing it, of let's put out the word there. There is something called Knox to Nuggets. And if you are yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, mm, please do subscribe. Today is an interesting day. My guest is not yet in the house for some reason. Trust God, she will probably join us later. But today we are still talking about having preparing for a blissful marriage. And you know, last week we looked at what is what does it even really mean to have a blissful marriage. And certain things came out clear. Number one, the, a blissful marriage is not a quarrel-free marriage. Mm -mm. It's okay to agree to disagree. You will not always see eye to eye on every issue. But it's not about seeing eye to eye or not seeing eye to eye. It's how you handle it, how you approach it, how you resolve it that matters. And that is very important. Many times you see people go to the altar all happy, all excited to be together. Love is so sweet. Love is divine. And a few months, years after, you hear that word, unreconcilable differences or phrase. And I'm wondering, unreconcilable, how did we even get there? No couple, and I mean it, no couple plans to get there. It's a little here, a little there, a little sweeping under the carpet, a, ref a little refusing to settle issues that become that mountain that appears insurmountable. What is true for marriage is true for every relationship. Whatever it is you would, you cannot tolerate, have a conversation on it. One of the biggest errors of mankind is the error of assumption. We assume, I expect you to know. I thought you should have known. I think you know. <clears throat> and we keep on on that error, excuse me. And before you know what's happening, you begin to take each other for granted. And you think he doesn't care. She thinks you don't care. And at the end of the day, it's irreconcilable differences. Some people, because of the culture, because of the environment, for their name's sake, they don't want to be seen out there as unfilled. They then endure. And they find every other thing to keep themselves busy or to be in their homes. <clears throat> Excuse me. They find every other thing to keep themselves busy except being in their homes. So they don't want to go. But they, they want to go, but they don't want to go because of what people will say. So because of what people will say, they keep quiet, they're suffering in silence, they're enduring. And then because of their own experience, then they then say, nobody enjoys marriage. My Jesus come afterward. Everybody is enduring it. Hello. If you're enduring yours, it's not mean everybody is enduring theirs. There is still something called blissful marriage. So we said it emphatically last week that a blissful marriage is that marriage that has a capacity of remaining stable. How do you remain stable? Number one, settle your differences as they happen. Don't sweep anything under the carpet. Don't assume he knows. Don't think he's just trying to spite you or she's just trying to spite you. Learn to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. It's important. What else do I want to talk about? Have you ever noticed, maybe I should even ask you this and make it, let it be a food for thought for you. Sometimes you have sat down, 
you've you've been upset by a colleague in the office or a boss, or you take it in your stride. So it's not their fault. They don't know better. But your spouse does about the same thing, and you go all all up in arms, ready to fight, ready to tear it down, and say it should know. Why would you think that person does not know, but your spouse knows? If you can give your boss the benefit of the doubt, can give your colleague the benefit of the doubt, can give your subordinate the benefit of the doubt, how much more your spouse? It's important to note that. It says it's a capacity to remain stable. So there is a possibility of being unstable, clear possibility. So the first thing you want to handle is how you handle offenses. Number two, how do you even handle your joyful moments? So something exciting has happened and you are excited, you are happy about it. How do you handle those moments? So you get home and you tell your spouse and you cannot seem to catch the same vibe. It can't seem to be as excited. What do you do? Do you go from that excited point to the offense point? Or do you calm down, tell him, you do understand why I'm excited. Let me break it down for you. Let me tell you exactly what is making me excited here. And then share the actual things that he probably have not seen or he has seen or she has seen and has not made a big deal out of it like you have. Maybe because he or she doesn't understand the consequences. Break it down. What else do I need you to do in having a blissful marriage? Celebrate yourselves. Celebrate him. Celebrate her. Let him or, or she feel him or her rather feel like the king or the queen in your life don't take each other for granted yes you married for one year five years 10 years 15 years 20 years 25 years 30 years 40 years it doesn't matter still learn to appreciate each other still learn to celebrate each other greet each other like royalty Oh, good morning, and you are walking away. Mm -mm. Stop and say that good morning properly. Celebrate the grace of God upon that life. You, you, you think it's, it's, it's life. It's taken for granted. No. No. You need it. Learn to celebrate the person. Learn to appreciate the person. First, do something right. Stop to say thank you. Oh, that was awesome. That was good. Thank you so much for getting this done. And that's what it is. Everybody wants to be appreciated. Everybody wants to be celebrated. Show me one person that doesn't want to be appreciated or celebrated. I can't find. Even you, you want to be appreciated. You want to celebrate it, to be celebrated. Why not do that for the next person? Do that for your spouse. Thank you. Well done. Please, those cuts were learnt as a child. We never outgrow them in having a blissful marriage. Extend those courses to your spouse. They're important. What else do I want to talk about in building a blissful marriage? So yes, have the right conversations. Appreciate, celebrate each other. Don't take each other for granted. Find something fun to do together. Find something fun to do together. It's so easy to grow apart. It's so easy to have different um, different hobbies, different fun things. I thought you know what's happening. You've gone that way. But decide to have something you do together every time. Decide to have something you do together. It could be watching a program. You could have a, a, a TV time belt that is both of you. You are both, even if you don't love movies, you don't love uh, um, football, and your spouse loves football, and it's in that tournament, sit by him or her. Find out which team is in red, which team is in black. Oh, who is scoring? Who is leading? Who do you even want to win? Let me let me join my faith within this life match. Who do you want to win? Yeah, tell me so I can pray along with you. Just find something. Ensure you are doing something together. Important to pray together. Very important. But it's so important to also do activities together. I don't love football. I'm not a TV person. 
you can't be less of a TV person than me. But you know what? I had to learn to watch TV. I'm not a movie person. Honestly, personally, I'm not a movie person. You start a movie, I can just take a walk. Then I'll come back in between. Uh -huh, who is the good man? Uh -huh, who is the bad man? So who is going to die? Okay, who is the actor? So I know who will not die in all of these stunts and all of that. And patiently will explain. So I'm like, oh, leave me now. Let me watch this. Thing. You can't watch it alone. We must watch it together. But over the last couple of years, we've learned to grow it together. Now I can sit back and actually watch a, a, a film from start to finish. Don't mind me, I will still strain between. I will still look for what else to do. This film said, okay, so what will happen next? How will I know? Have I watched it before? You two sit down and watch. Let's look, look at it together. Let's know what will happen at the end of it together. Then I sit back again. And I pick my phone. I'm like, no, drop your phone. You're supposed to be watching this movie. And I'm like, okay, so what's next? But over the time, I'm not perfect. I'm not there yet. But I can watch it a bit better. I'm, I'm sure I'm not asking him as often as I used to, who is the good man, who is the bad man, who is the actor, who is the actress. Now I can sit back and follow the storyline. Sometimes I'm even the one guessing what will happen next. I think this is about to be, because, oh, film director, now you are there. It's over time. Find something to do together. Okay, so he's not a TV person, you're not a TV person, but it just exercises. Go to the gym together. Go on the walk together. Find things that bring you together and do those things together. From there, conversations would come. Some from, from there, even some things that you wanted to iron out that you didn't know how to iron it out will come up and you can iron them out in that beautiful space. So find something to do together. Do fun things together. Play games together. Go on holidays together. Sometimes leave the children and be the me and you time again. Cut each other again. Love each other again. Date again. Right for 30 years. Doesn't stop it. What else do you need to do together? Share your dreams and visions. So you're at this stage of your life. What are you looking forward to? Share your frustrations. Oh boy, I think I should resign today. This work, I'm just tired. Share it. Make your spouse your best friend. That person you can be vulnerable with. Why are you doing packaging with your spouse? You can't now. It doesn't add value. Are you, what are you packaging? If you cannot be real with your spouse, then who do you want to be real with? One girlfriend out there, one boyfriend out there? No. I know when guys come together, when girls come together, the girls talk, the guys talk. But let your spouse be your best friend. Share your frustrations. Share your dreams. Share your aspirations. Every time you dream again, let him know. Every time you dream again, let her know. Every time you feel like quitting, talk about it. You will draw strength one from another. I don't know how many times I felt like quitting even Knox to Nuggets. I said, ah, are you not on Knox to Nuggets today? So who is your guest? What are you talking about? What's the plan for the month? And even if I was thinking about dropping it, I'm energized again to go. That at least if I don't have any other fan in the world, I have one fan, and that's my husband. Share your dreams, share your frustrations, share your aspirations. Talk. A problem shared, say is half solved. If you're talking to the right person, your spouse is the right person. Talk to that person. In having a, a, a blissful marriage, she said something. Said, educate yourself. Educate yourself about marriage. Educate. You don't know it all. Trust me. You married for 30 years, 40 years. You still don't know it all. As you are changing, your spouse is also changing. There's something new about you. There's also something new about him or her. So keep educating yourself. You know, when this thing became popular, the love languages... I was talking about love language, love language. I have to ask myself, do I even know his love language? And I stopped to go read out about what it is about love language. And I said, okay, I think I can have a guess. But guess what? He did that, um, he did that, they filled that questionnaire that explains about love languages. And I, could, I said, okay, yes, this is his love language. So my guess was right. Or, mm, I didn't get it there. This should have been his love language. 
if you don't have that assessment, hmm, don't want to give it as a freebies on this program. Do I really want to give it as a freebies? Okay. If you don't have that assessment on understanding each other's love languages and you want it, reach out to me, DM me, private chat me. I may consider giving it for to you as a freebies on this program. I know people run that program at a cost, but as a, the Knox Nuggets family, we can share that together. I can throw that in as a freebie. So if you want to know more about it, if you want to understand or want to fill that question, or to even know what is your own love language and understand his or, or her own love language, reach out to me. I'll be happy to share the questionnaire with you and take you through it on a one-on-one. -on -one. Only for my regular listeners. So if you are not regular, don't reach out to me because I will know. Anyway, that's one of those things. So if you if you want it, reach out to me. There'll be quite a number of freebies on this program. So if you want any of them, still reach out to me. If you haven't gotten them, I'll be happy to send them to you. <clears throat> so read books with an open mind in educating yourself. Watch programs together. If he's not reading with you, we learned that from Mommy Mo last week, and it was interesting. It says it, it might not be reading the book, but when I finish reading the book, I turn to him and say, Chairman, I read something today, and then share what I have read in that book with him. Two things will happen. Either he gets curious and takes that book to read, or he takes the learnings from you, and you discuss it together, and you have impacted that knowledge very nicely. That's it. You have not read this book. I read this book and I told you to read this book. Uh -uh. Soft words pacifies anger, pacifies wrath. Everything is not by force, by fire. Trust me. A lot of things we can solve on the altar of conversations. So pray together, share your dreams and visions together, share your challenges together, educate yourself continually. And what else do we want to talk about? I want to land on this. Wow, my time is fast. I thought because it's just me today, I will be very brief. But here, here we are. Can you ever finish talking about these things? One of the things I want to talk about in marriage, no matter how many years you have been married, and if you're just about to get married, are you not blessed listening to this today? One thing you must know is you. Who are you? Self-discovery must always come before self-mastery. Many times you want to do self-mastery without self-discovery. It doesn't work. You can't master what you don't know. You think you know yourself? Hmm. Stop and think again. Do you truly know yourself? Do you know your strength? Do you know your weaknesses? Do you know the opportunities available to you? Do you know your threats? What are the things that get you intimidated, that gets you coiling into your shell, that gets you go quiet, do you know them? Have you thought about them? And how are you handling them? You see, one of the things we think is that at a certain age, you assume you know. Never assume you know. Even you, you are changing. Sometimes the environment changes you unconsciously. Sometimes the things you are learning changes you unconsciously. Every time you read a book, every time you watch a film, every time you add any form of knowledge, consciously or unconsciously, something changes in you. If you can't catch yourself and know it, you will run, you just run dry. People suffer burnout a whole lot because they don't even know themselves. So they are struggling. They're trying to do 10,000 things at the same time. They're trying to find relevance. They're trying to find... Um, uh, they're trying to get accolades. They're trying to get people to notice them. They are trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. And all the trying is not working. So sometimes you are wondering, why is all of this happening? I think you need to stop and ask, who am I? You need to just ask that question. Who am I? Yes, I was this 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Who am I? What are the things that I, I, I'm still loving today? What are the things I suddenly can no longer tolerate? Who am I? Until you can answer that question, who am I, you might not be able to go far. 
in life as a whole, and of course, clearly in marriage. Because daily we evolve. Understand your strengths. And don't get consumed trying to strengthen your weakness. Trying to be Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. Trying to be that flawless person. You will make mistakes, trust me. And we will make some more. So don't get caught up in, I don't want to be, make any mistake. I want to be perfect. I want to be this. I want to be that. No, not what am I trying to be. Who am I? It's a lot. You want to be something. You want to be somebody. You want to be like. Don't try to be like. You see, every time you are trying to be like, the best you can be is like. You just be like that person. But you know what? You are unique. There's something important about you. There's something unique about you. There's something different the world needs. If the whole world were like you, it would be a boring place. If the whole world were like me, it would be dead boring. God does not want us to be perfect. Perfection is a mirage. Perfection is actually a journey. You never get there. Just be the best you unapologetically. You will make mistakes. When you make the mistakes, apologize, get up and move on. Now, when you understand that you are not perfect, how then do you expect that person to be perfect? That's the truth. The moment you know you are not perfect, then you also should understand that that other person is also on a journey. He or she is not perfect. You know, I thought about this over the weekend and this occurred to me. So you are holding something breakable. So now it's my phone I'm holding. And then it drops. And he said, Jesus, that was a mistake. But somebody else holds the same thing and it drops. Why are you so careless? And I'm like, hmm, for you, it's a mistake. For the other person, it's careless. Why is it not careless for you and a mistake for the other person? Simple. You believe you didn't want to hurt yourself. You believe you wanted the best. You believe you didn't want to destroy that thing. So clearly, it was a mistake. What makes you think that person wants to destroy it? What makes you think that person wants it bad? No. If you can excuse yourself, just excuse the other person. I always say, and I crack it as a joke, by I minutes, mean life isn't so hard. We make it hard. Whatever you can excuse for yourself, can you just be kind, just a little kind, and excuse the other person too? When you have swatted yourself, you know your strength, you know your weaknesses, you know the opportunities available, you know the threats. What do you need to do? Strengthen your strength and let the other person complement your weakness. Strengthen your strength. Your area of strength might be that other person's area of weaknesses. So when you leave your strength unattended to, when you leave that garden unattended to, and it's growing up in, 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 in weeds because you are trying to be that weak person, you want to make it strong, you want to be good in that area. I'm not the best of singers. So I'm not going to be learning to sing. The other things I can do well, I should just learn to do those things very well. And I said, oh, I love to sing. My husband admired that lady that was singing. So because of that, I must work on this voice. I must become a good singer. So when I sing next, I will wow him. Guess what? By the time you are getting to that level of perfection in song, somebody has gone better and somebody is going to do better. Then that person sings, wow, is it like in that person more than me? I must do more. I'm, and then you are, you are shadow chasing. You are looking for what is not lost. It's not your strength. It's not your strength. Don't compare yourself with that person. The fact that your spouse says, oh, wow, that person sings well, does not make you kill yourself trying to sing well. Join him to acknowledge, oh, wow, I also enjoyed that singing. That was good music, I must admit. Be comfortable in your skin. Even the Bible says he that compares himself with himself is not wise. You can't keep comparing yourself with people 
everybody has their different giftings. Your strength might be my weak areas. My area of weakness might be your strong areas. So what do we need to do? We collaborate. We work together. A songwriter said, I need you. You need me. Not one person is complete in him or herself. Why are you struggling? Marriage can be blissful. Marriage can be enjoyable. You don't have to endure marriage. You don't have to. But you know, it starts with you. Know you. Love you. Celebrate you. Look into the mirror. Look at that babe. Look at that guy and celebrate the person. I think it was Adiola Kingsley James. She was on our program sometime back. I talked about celebrating yourself. One of the things she asked, if I could remember well, is can you look into the mirror and praise yourself for 10 minutes? Just look into the mirror. I want to praise yourself for 10 minutes. Very few people can. You know why? We have been taught to, it, it, it's pride, it's arrogance, trying to appreciate yourself. No, appreciate the next person. Hello, appreciate you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in the image of God. God loves you just the way you are. Does that mean you will not improve? No, you will improve. But you will not shadow box. You will not be chasing what is not lost. You not be trying to be another person. Be you. You are authentic. Be your authentic self. It's important. When you know you, when you love you, when you can celebrate you, when you can give yourself the benefit of the doubt, then you're able to love your spouse. You're able to celebrate your spouse. You're able to appreciate your spouse. You're able to give your spouse the benefit of the doubt and you're able to work together. Then you can share your dreams. You can share your failures. You can share your weaknesses. You can share your errors <clears throat> without being, without feeling condemned. Sometimes you make a mistake. I don't want anybody to know about that mistake. You want to hide that mistake. I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to know. Uh -uh. You are human. The only infallible person is God. And guess what? You are not God. And thank God you are not God. And thank God I'm not God. God is God all by himself. He's the only one complete. All of us are part of the body. We, you have something I need. I have something you need. We all have something to contribute to each other's lives. Give your spouse the benefit of the doubt. Be friends. Be open. Be vulnerable. Understand that blissful marriage is possible. Blissful marriage can be your portion. I'm enjoying my marriage and I trust God for you that you also enjoy your marriage. But if you're out there, you're struggling and you want somebody to talk to, trust me, your truth is available. I can be there for you. We can talk through trouble times together. We can walk it through together. We can look at how to make it work because it can work. Until I come your way next week, another edition of Nux to Nuggets. It's been fun. I've enjoyed myself today. Mommy Mo couldn't make it, but I believe she'll be in the house most likely next week, Monday. I, pre I believe all is well with her. So until I come your way next week, Monday, either with Mommy Mo or without, stay tuned. You never can tell what will happen next week, Monday. And next week, Monday is, I think, the start of a new month. Yes, it is. Next week, Monday is actually 1st of May, the month of grace. I'm excited about that month are you so let's sit together next week monday and until then remember if you can think it you can be it and you can have it and as always together we win god bless you see you same time same station enjoy the rest of the day bye for now <laughs>